Hello everybody, this is Professor Triplett and this is a basic tutorial on making a simple leaf. I have a second tutorial on making a more advanced leaf with curves. Uh, you can watch that if you want. Uh, but uh, to just get a leaf done kind of quick and fast and, and easy, I'm going to show you a different one, a different method. Uh, because I think this method um, is is going to be better for a lot of people. So um, <clears throat> first thing uh, I'm doing is I'm not actually uh, making the uh, a tutorial on making the leaf texture. I have those as well. Um, so I have I have different leaf textures or leaf uh, texturing tutorials here. Uh, these are photo sourced, of course, and then I show how to cut it out and make bump maps for it and everything. Um, but what we're going to do is I'm just going to textures.com and you can make a free account and there's a certain amount of things you can download. So if you just type in leaf and look that up, uh, there's a whole bunch of leaf textures that you can look through. Uh, the one that I particularly using, I already downloaded it. So I'm just going to show it to you really quick. This one right here. Um, but I am going to change something, uh, about this leaf. This leaf's aspect ratio is, uh, it's not square, and for the the project that I'm doing, I want to make a, a square aspect ratio just because it's gonna it's gonna be really easy to apply. This is more like a beginner's tutorial, so I don't want to get into too too much complexity. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is just uh, go into Photoshop first and say open, and then you can see it's going right to my file. And here's the leaf, and it's actually getting cut off down there. There's the leaf, hit open, and boom, we've got this leaf inside of here. Let me move my tools into the frame. There we go. Okay, let's look at the size. So control alt I will bring up the image size. And so the height, these are not powers of two. This is a power two actually, 1024, but this is not. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna change it to make the whole thing uh, 1024 by 1024. I would admit this is probably more optimized for, um, for well, I'll tell you what, this is what you could do. If you want to really make this optimized, uh, you would want to crop it down to uh, 1024 by 512. So that would be two uh, powers of two. So um, anyway, but let's go ahead and I'll show you a couple things. Okay, so image, first of all, I like to rotate um, uh, the image so it's no, not that way. Let's do that again. Um, clockwise, clockwise. Okay, I like it up and down. I don't know. It's just my pet peeve. Uh, and then I also like to have um, the canvas size, like I said, uh, a square canvas size. So percent. No, we want pixels. Sorry. So if I go and dial in 1024 here what it'll do is ex just extend the borders. So there you go. Now, if you wanted to optimize this, just hit control zero to, to zoom out, um, or zoom extents, I should say. If you wanted to optimize this, you could go ahead and, you know, if you have your rulers out, control R, pull your rulers out, and then you just click in and drag. You could probably make this leaf so it was just one uh, within this tile right here, which would be 512 by 1024. I'm just gonna leave it like this for, for uh, simple, simplicity reasons and um, we'll go from there okay so all I have to do now is just save this again just hit control s and now it's saved out uh, and it's gonna be this new size so I'm gonna jump into Maya and very simple I'm gonna put a plane down so let's just put a plane down and I'm gonna assume that this leaf is maybe like you know f maybe 10 centimeters so I'm gonna go in my channel box and dial in 10 by 10. So there we go. And I only need one subdivision at this point. So one like that. And then I could hit F on my keyboard and we can see we've got our plane there. And I'm gonna go ahead and let's turn off the grid because we won't really need to see that. Okay, I'm gonna go maximize my view because I'm in a condensed uh, view right here. So I'm gonna hit control space it's going to maximize my view because I want you to see I'm going to put a material on there. So right click on it, assign new material. Um, so if I was using a leaf within Maya, um, usually leaves have some specularity to it. So you're going to at least want to use like a blend. Um, 
or a fong, but you uh, obviously if you want to be more advanced, use the, uh, the like the Arnold shaders. But uh, for this particular one, uh, I'm going to go ahead and just use a Lambert just for simplicity reasons, um, because uh, we're basically just trying to get through the workflow here. All right, so in the attribute editor, you can see if you uh, look at the different tabs. You get the Lambert, that's the material, so I'm gonna call it M underscore leaf. And then in the color here, I'll just go find that texture. So what I can do too, since I already have a window open. Um, so you can see here, it's in projects, CGT116 source images, that's what my project should be set to. So as long as my project set to that, set project and set. Okay, so now when I go to um, file here, it will automatically go into that source images because I set my project to that this particular folder. So it knows to look in the source images. So what was that thing called again? I just missed it. Let's see, it's called texture com leaf. Okay, let's see here. There we go, open. All right, now let's hope this works correctly. I'm gonna hit six on my keyboard and yeah came in fine okay so you can see that right there now if you needed a low poly leaf uh, and you didn't need any bend in it you could just technically use this card as a leaf card um, one thing you could do if you wanted to minimize the amount of uh, opacity space which is sometimes a good idea is you can go into your move tool Double click to the move tool to bring up the tool settings, or you can just go to the tool settings, right? I think that's it right there, or no, it's right there. It's the one next to the channel box, this little button there. Um, and you can turn on preserve UVs. I'm gonna close this for now. And so if I have preserve UVs on and I just move this on my X axis, what it's gonna do is it's actually gonna uh, let me slide um, the, the geo and the UVs at the same time. So, um, now we're making like a more refined smaller card and because the reason why you'd want to do that is because whether you're in games or whether you're in film um, rendering opacity it has to do like two passes like it has to do a pass for you know this um, this uh, area and then it has to do passes for what's behind it so it can just be tricky it, it takes longer to render and stuff it it seems like not much but if you have a thousand leaves you know, on a tree, then it becomes more labor intensive for the computer to render. So <clears throat> anyway, so that could be a leaf card. That could be a very, very simple leaf card, but we could also make this a lot better. So what's the ways to make it better? Okay, remember we still have our preserve UVs on. So I'm gonna hold my uh, control button with my cut tool on, and I'm just gonna lay a few cuts in here, maybe one there and one there and then I'll put one in the middle like so okay so that's pretty good and now if I go back to my verts I can actually just shape this now let me go ahead and now I, I, I did not use a symmetrical so I'm gonna have to do it for each side I was gonna use symmetry right there but I just realized I did I did it differently on both sides so we could just shape this thing like this and this is like I said, this is a very simple leaf. You can have less, um, you can have less polygons in here if you're doing like a game model and you want it to be lower poly. Uh, you could definitely put less cuts in. Um, but uh, what this is going to do again is it's going to allow me to bend this uh, and make this leaf look closer to a real leaf. So you'll see what I mean in a second. So let's go like that. And then for this, actually, you know, you can you can do something like this if you want. If you want to get kind of cool with this, let me pull this down a little bit. You could actually take this, and if you turned your uh, preserve UV off, and you had like a holding point right there at the at the base, and then you grab this, you can actually kind of straighten that out if you wanted to. That's a cool little trick. Uh, so watch what happens if I don't have preserve UV on. Um, well, for that one, it's not that bad, but if I'm over here, it will it'll stretch everything around. This, this area is mostly empty, so it doesn't matter that much. But uh, I'm going to put Preserve UV back on. Turn that out. And then I can do something like this, like so. 
Okay. So let's make sure this is catching everything. We can leave that all clause if we want, or if you really want to, you can you can go ahead and just make that a triangle. Like I said, if it's like a game model, no one's gonna know the difference. Even in a film model, I don't think anybody would know the difference uh, if it's a, if it's small and off in the distance. If you're gonna get up close to it, then you need to model it more closely. Uh, okay, so something like this, uh, once you have it done this far, go to your, well, I'm in perspective. All right, so let's put a bend deformer on it, deform and nonlinear bends. Your bend deformer is gonna start off like this, so you can just take um, your rotation tool, hold J for snapping, and just snap it down like that, and just rotate it, and then go into your bend, and let's see if I got it curving the wrong way. So I don't, I don't actually have this curving the way that I really want it, but you know what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna leave that one alone, and I'm gonna actually select this, and I'm gonna put another bend on, so you can see how you can make multiple of these, so. Let's see, not linear form of bend. Okay, so now I'm gonna do the same thing, hold J so it snaps, do that, and then I need to also rotate it in the Z, so probably 90 in the Z, so I can get the bend going the right direction. And I'll show you. Okay, so there we go. So now we have the bend going in the right direction, so now you have a bent leaf. Um, what you could do though, which makes this a lot cooler, is you can actually take this deformer and move it to, you can just slide it to the end where the actual um, stem is and or whatever, uh, where it's gonna connect to the, uh, the actual tree. And then you'd wanna take the low bounds. You, you can take the low bounds and cut that down so it's not bending at all, but you wanna raise the high bounds so that you can basically bend it like that. Okay, so why did I leave the first deformer on there? I left the first deformer on there because if I come in my outliner and select this, like let's say I want to make multiple leaves and I want them to look a little bit different, I can select this one and bend this a little bit. Nope, I got the wrong one. Let's do this one. Curve. Uh, where are they both going the same direction now? Maybe I had both of them selected when I did that. Let's try this one. Okay, this is strange. I've never seen this happen before. Somehow it looks like these are... So this one, this one has been rotated. That's the second one. The first one has not. Yet it... Oh! <laughs> I see what I did. My bad. I selected the wrong one. Okay, there we go. Okay, so this one we can do the same thing. Um, it looks a little bit wonky. Let me move this down like that. Okay. And then let me increase the high bound like that. So it goes all the way through. Okay, sorry. I, was, I kept selecting the wrong curve uh, and I didn't realize what I was doing. All right, so anyway, so what you can do, that, that's actually a bit extreme, but just to give the leaves a little bit of variety, you can bend it in two different ways if you want. Okay, so you can have one going off there, have it, and then what you do is that when you have, you know, let's say you wanna make like maybe four leaves that are bent different directions and whatnot, so they you have some variety. You just select the leaf and hit Control D, and then you can move that off to the side, and now the duplicate one will drop all of the bends. It won't have any of that on it, so it's basically locked into that. Um, it's locked into that position, but you can come back to this one, and you can go to bend two, or bend one, I should say, bend it back like a little bit that way, go to bend two, um, bend this one, you know, maybe that you want one that's kind of going up or something like that, and then you can go ahead and just do the same thing. Select this, Control D, and now you've got your second leaf, and so on and so forth. So you can make a bunch of these leaves that are, you know, a variety of them from one uh, leaf. It's pretty simple. Um, another thing you can do, let me just zero these out. So um, another, uh, like if you want to get a little bit more uh, high poly, make them a little bit nicer. You could always just drop another edge loop through the middle here. So I'm gonna just drop an edge loop here and I'm gonna snap it. So I'm holding control and shift and I'm just snapping it to the middle. It looks like I still have my uh, 
my edge flow on. So now that I've laid those two new edges in there, um, I can go ahead and go to my vertices and select a few of these vertices like so. And I could just like lift these up a little bit. So now the leaf has a nice little um, bend in there and maybe do the same here, just a little bit less. So it's got like this little loop in there. Um, so this is just a very basic uh, uh, way to do a leaf. It's, it's not uh, as advanced as the other method I show, but um, it'll get the job done really fast. And you can see if like you, if you did put a smooth preview on it, um, it does look nice and nice and uh, curved. So anyway, either way though, when you, when you look at these in the viewport, um, they're gonna look fine. You know, if they're, this is not something you're gonna be super close to. If you're gonna do that, you need to put more effort into making the leaf look more realistic. But um, for a plant that's, you know, in the background or something like that, mm, this is this is pretty good. Okay, so that's 16 minutes, uh, but it's pretty simple. Um, and, and I think just about anybody who's uh, gotten uh, into modeling can pretty much pull this off. And uh, that's it for this one. Thanks for watching and happy modeling.